Hey guys, it's Todd at Commercial Tracks. And listen, we wanted to come to you today with a very quick video on understanding perceived volume versus actual volume when you're producing your videos. Getting the best audio, getting the best sound, making sure that it's heard uh, and that the mix is done well that's going to make a big difference between whether or not your video seems professional or whether or not it seems amateurish, right? So what's the difference between perceived volume and actual volume? So the actual volume is what is actually registering on the meter. So there's a way that, you know, your software, it measures the amplitude and it shows you on the meters what the volume is of your track or where the frequencies are actually sitting in the meter. From the low frequencies to the high frequencies, uh, the meters are actually giving you a gauge of the overall volume. The EQ is there to help you see what frequencies are existing and where they're existing and what the general amplitude of those frequencies are. But these are an assessment of actually the volume or the amplitude. It is not a, an assessment of what your ears actually hear and what they perceive as being louder. And when someone listens to your video content, it's subjective. Somebody could tell you that it sounds louder to them. Another person would say that it sounds you know, lower to them. Generally speaking, it's subjective and everybody will hear things different. But as a general rule, you need to get a good balance on that content so the majority of people basically would hear it the same way. So we have meters uh, that we use in our programs, whether it be, you know, whatever your editing software platform might be, these meters are used to give you a guide or some type of a reference point for where the amplitude or where the signal is actually hitting. Uh, and that's great, but you never want to get to the place to where you're not trusting your ears and, and continuing to make sure that you use it as a starting point, but not as the ending point, uh, that it helps you to know where the volume sits in your mix, where the voiceover is versus uh, the background music. Those things need to have a good balance. But one of the things that can get in the way when you're not used to mixing or you maybe have not developed your ear is the fact that there is a perceived volume that your mind hears. People are in all types of different places when they watch your content and what you want is for that content to sound good wherever it is, right? So that the voiceover or the narrative is actually understandable. It's at a good volume in relationship to the, the background music or the sound effects. You don't want those things to fight and cause the uh, audience to miss the messaging behind the video content. And so uh, understand that uh, the meters can't be the only place uh, that you look. Look to them as a starting point, uh, but, but understand your ears will perceive that they hear something that may be a little different or that may be very different from what the meters are actually showing you. Uh, a good example of this is how that when you look at um, a mix uh, for a piece of music uh, inside of a uh, uh, an EQ or a graphic, a graphic EQ that shows you the actual frequency levels. You will notice that very oftentimes, let's say it's dance music or something like that, something has a, a heavy bass line. The bass line can register in amplitude as louder than anything else in the mix, but it's not the easiest thing to hear. When I'm listening to that mix or I'm listening to that song, while the bass is registering louder, it may not be the thing that I actually hear the best. So the mid-range frequencies are the things that typically will stick out the most. Maybe between 300 and 3K, those are the things that are easier for the human ear to hear. Uh, these are the frequencies that we typically would speak and communicate in. Uh, we're very used to these frequencies. They stick out more to us. They're more noticeable to us, right? And so they can seem louder to us or more prevalent to us when they're actually not the loudest thing in the mix. And so understand that, um, you know, sound effects, all these things can come in at different frequency levels uh, that uh, can be perceived as being louder than what they actually are. And this is why you have to trust your ears. So hearing a mix or a video, the content that you've created, it's, you know, the volumes are subjective. Uh, what I hear in my voiceover track versus the background music, it's subjective. Some things just, they come out sounding louder. There's a number of reasons for this. It could be the, the nature of the music that's being used, the, the genre, the format. Some things can be overpowering in a mix and they can get in the way of your voiceover when in actuality the meters don't show that it's too loud. You know, it, it looks like it's okay. Even when you use some of the um, 
some of the tools that are maybe uh, available inside of your editing software. For instance, we use Premiere Pro. Premiere has a audio ducking tool that will allow you to actually identify your dialogue track versus your background music track, and it will actually duck the audio for you. Uh, and this is great, but again, it's a starting point. And so you want to get to the place to where you start to trust your ears. And uh, because even though these tools are great, to start you off and help you get help to get you into the ballpark of a good mix, uh, they should not be used to the degree that they that you stop thinking about or that you stop using your ears uh, as your ultimate reference point. Uh, a good mix is based on you know what sounds good to you, and you've been listening to music all your life. You know uh, you've been listening to mixes, you've been listening to video content for a long time, and so uh, we are better at this than we sometimes think. And so when a a, when an audio mix sounds too loud to you or it seems like the music is overpowering you're probably right you know and your audience is going to hear that the same way so you want to get used to trusting your ears and so you want to create that content to where the mix is balanced to where the things that need to be heard and brought up in the mix are actually there they're actually present no one wants to fight to hear the dialogue in the content that you're creating so you know making sure that those levels are are, are good and that they're right it, it helps and you also don't want that lot dialogue to be so loud that it's um you know that you don't really hear the music behind it because sometimes the music is uh, very instrumental in creating the mood of the actual video so you don't want to get rid of that either it just needs to be at a good balance so that uh, everything that's supposed to be heard is actually heard and that there are there they are those elements like the music and the dialogue they're working together this is going to cause you to create better content uh, for your clients or for your channel or whatever it is that you might be doing. So listen, I hope you found this information to be useful, something that will help you create better content. And if you have, please like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and we'll see you in the next video.